Hello and welcome to this RPG Architect video. Today we will be creating a new project, setting up some tiles, and getting a character on the map. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, so when you first enter the editor, you're going to have a bunch of options, but you're not actually going to be in a project, and so we got to create a new project first. However, once you create a new project, it should go to the last project that you were in. So in order to create a new project, you just simply go to File and then Create New Project. From here, you're going to choose the Project Path which I'm just gonna simply go into an RPGA folder I created in my documents. And here I'm gonna specifically create this projects folder. So project one, and each project is going to have a folder in here. And so I'll just select that. I'm gonna do without a template. There might be other templates that he adds later on the dev, but uh, for right now, I'm just gonna do a blank template. This is the tile dimension, so the tile size. Now I like to use 16 by 16 tiles, but just note that this tile size is only one for your project and you can only set it at this window. So you can't change this once you get in there. And so just really know what your tile size is gonna be. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is set my resolution. Now I want this, basically you're thinking about this as what do you want your base window to be? So I want it to be one or uh, 1280 by 720. And you can see there's just an option right here. So I can just click that and auto populates. And so that's what I want mine to be. Now it's going to scale it uh, based off your tile size. So it's going to scale it fine, but you just have to kind of, it, it's, it's a weird set. I'm used to setting my resolution as like really low and then scaling it, but this one kind of scales it for you. So you just have to select what you want your, your base window to be, and then it will scale it for you. And you'll kind of see that there's, there's a full screen option, but I'm just, I'm not going to select on that. I'm going to start in 2d mode. Now, Unlike the tile size, the rest of these settings, they're all changeable inside the editor itself. So we, I'll, I'll be able to show you 3D versus 2D and stuff like this, but I'm gonna start with 2D just because it's simple. Uh, it's simpler to understand compared to RPG Maker. And so I'm gonna leave everything else the way that it is. For instance, I don't wanna adjust the scale because again, I said it scales automatically kind of. So I'm just gonna leave the, the window, des the desired resolution, and then it takes the tile size and it scales it as far as one goes, it scales it pretty evenly as far as a low resolution game would go. And so with that, I'm gonna click okay. And now we can get to editing our project. All right, so the first thing let's do is let's add some tiles and create a map. Now the one hotkey you're gonna wanna get really used to is pressing F8. So F8 is going to bring up the database for RPG Architect. And you can see that this is where we're gonna be setting up the characters, skills, maps, and by maps, I mean tiles and stuff like this and also the uh, system options that we were setting up when we were first creating the project. This is where you're gonna change some of those if you wanna change them. But we're simply gonna go to tiles. And so under maps, tile sets here, this is where you configure your tile sets. You can add as many tiles sets as you want. I'm gonna hit okay or hit five there and add five. But when you select this top one here, we'll just name this one outside, one. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some normal 2D tile sets. Now you'll see animated tiles, terraforming tiles, structure tiles. A lot of, some of these are 3D based. So the normal tile sets are the ones that are 2D based and there's none populated by default. So we have to resize and add some. So I'll just add five here. I'll click on one. And then how you add them is you add the image right here. But when you click on this, it's only gonna pop, pop up the uh, fold the project folder. And so you have to have the asset in the project folder in order to do anything. So real quick, I'm just going to go to this tile set that I'm going to add. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go into my project contents and tiles, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now, when I go back here and I say image, I'm going to now have that tile set and I'm going to hit okay. And now it's in there. Now there are a few things we can do while we're in here. One, we can show the grid and get a little easier view of it. The other thing we can do is go to collisions and we can start setting collisions for areas that the player cannot walk on. So for instance, if I left click on these cliffs, that means that the player will not be able to traverse on that tile. If I wanna undo that, I can just simply right click and it will pop that X off there. I'm gonna add this on a couple of rocks that we'll just throw on the scene too. And that should be it, all that we need to set up here. So I'm going to click okay, and then we're going to create a new map. And maps are found over here under this section. And to create a new one, we're just gonna right click and create new. Now down here, we're gonna just name it. I'll just name this map one. And then when you do get more maps, you can actually move them around and organize them however you want. 
The important things to note for now are that you want to set what tile set is it is going to use. So we have the outside one, the one that we just created. And then we have the height and the width as as far as tiles go. So a height of 20 tiles, a width of 20 tiles. If we want to change that, we can just click resize here. And I'm just going to add the width a little bit higher. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this, this viewer here doesn't show the boundary of your size. And there's a way to kind of see it, but I do hope that during early access, the developer adds a line that we can just right away see how big our scene will be. Now, there are some other options here. This uh, camera is mainly from what I understand for 3D, so we will definitely get into that as we as I show you the different perspectives we can use in this engine. Uh, lighting and then user interfaces, those will definitely all be different videos as well. But now we can get to creating our map. So over here under the flat tiles, this is gonna be the tile set that we added. Now there's a very important thing to understand here, and that is that this viewer, this where you go to select the tiles and lay them on the map, is it will only show 10 tiles wide. So keep that in mind on your when you're importing your tiles into the database. If you remember, our, this was almost you know triple or, or at least double, no, about triple or, or uh, four times that height or that width. So if you want easier viewing, because you can see how it kind of discombobulated my tile set. So if you're wanting an easier preview, make sure that your tile sets that you're setting up are edited to be only 10 wide. That, that will make it so much easier when you're laying these tiles. So I'm gonna hit okay on here, and now we can start laying some tiles. So the first thing I want is to just lay some green tiles. Now what I, what I was meaning by, you can kind of tell where the boundaries are, is you can see when the tile square starts popping up, that means you can place them, and then when it disappears, that means that you're out of the boundary. So that's one way to look at it. Another thing is, is you can just fill it right away. Now, the one thing to get used to right away is that you're gonna want ground tiles on the lower layer. So these are your layers over here. You have a lower, a base, and an upper layer. The base is only one layer. The upper layer, you can have as many as you want, and the lower layer, you can have as many as you want. There's another sky layer. I haven't dove into that yet, so I'm guessing that'll be another video but it is important that your ground tiles are on the lower layer. That way you can have your collision tiles on the base layer, and then you can have anything that needs to appear above the player on your upper layer. So on the lower layer, I'm going to select this fill tool and just fill it in. And I'll actually select a grass that looks a little more natural. You can control and mouse wheel to scale it up here. And then from here, we can go to the base layer and we can lay some of the uh, restriction so I believe it was these tiles. Oops, and then we'll just select the normal one. And this is where it is really important that you kind of set up the tile sheet appropriately, or else you kind of have to find your tiles. And so we'll go something like this. All right, now this will just be uh, very generic. We could go and maybe add some water. I'll just show you some water here. And if you do say a circle, you can actually draw in a circle so that kind of cool little things you can do. Um, you can also erase if you need to. So we'll just erase this here. Like this, you can right click and actually, oh, if the eraser is unselected, you can right click and copy that tile to, to paste. All right, so now we want to see our map in action under the play test here. So we're gonna go to the entities here. This is where your events or objects are. And I'm going to right click and say set new game position because I want to uh, be able to just see what this map looks like in the game right now. And then we can just hit play test. And that's uh, F5 if you want a hotkey for it. Now, first time you play, you're probably going to be prompted with something that says, do you want to save? And then you're also going to see this black screen right here. And that is because of a couple things. First off, I personally like to go to editor settings and I like to che check auto save on play test. That will avoid that pop-up that says, do you want to save on your playtest? It's the only way to preview any new changes. So it makes sense to save it if that's the only way to preview any new changes. So I always select that one on. And then I'm going to press F8 and scroll down to title screen. And I'm going to say skip title. The reason we were seeing that black screen at the beginning is because we were technically in a title user interface. And so now I'm going to play again. And now we can see the scene that I created. 
It looks very low resolution and it's exactly kind of what I'm looking for. All right, so now let's add a character. Let's make sure that the starting point has a character with it. I'm gonna hit F8 again and go to characters. And here, this is where you're gonna add. Right now it defaults one, I'll just say five. And we're gonna start adding a character. We'll just call this the hero. You can add a portrait. You can add, this is where you're gonna add the sprite model. So I'm gonna select here. And again, it shows you what folder it's trying to look for, but there's nothing in it. And so what I'm going to do is go to my uh, characters here and I'll just grab this uh, purple uh, girl here, copy. And instead of tiles, I'm gonna go to characters and paste it into here. And so now when I go into this again, we have the character one. Now this is actually set up correctly because it's set up like RPG Maker. And if you got a setup like this, it's going to work just right off the bat. I don't have to adjust for anything and I can simply click OK. And my character is going to have an idle and a walk animation right off the bat. Now there are some other options that we'll have to go over on another video. This is just to get a character on the map and moving. So I'm gonna click OK. The last thing that I actually forgot to do was go down to to the new game and under initial members, I'm just gonna select hero. That is going to be the first uh, character in this party. Hit okay. And now you will have a playable character. It is an idle and it walks and everything works. We should be able to go over here. It's moving a little slow, we'll go over this. But uh, you can see that the restrictions are working and everything's working great. So I hope this video was helpful. Like, subscribe if you wanna see more RPG Architect content. Also consider Patreon for support on this channel. Any questions, we got comments below, Steam forms, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.